So we're on our way down to the tank manufacturer this morning. We're gonna pick up that 36 inch jelly aquarium that we'll take to the crating company and ultimately ship out to um, Switzerland. Um, I have to admit, I've always been a little uncomfortable with the international orders, more specifically uh, the paperwork and documentation and all of that that's associated with it. Um, my fear is that I'm going to end up spending the money to create something, uh, pay for shipping to some foreign or distant land, and about halfway there, or 90% of the way there, something paperwork-wise goes wrong and the task can't be completed, and I end up either losing the shipment or having to pay to bring it back. Well, that's where freight forwarders supposedly come in. And I've used a few freight forwarders in the past, but most of them are, I don't want to say flaky, but I would say to a certain degree unreliable. Namely because uh, you are contacting, that, uh, contacting them two, three, four, five times for different quotes for different places, and let's face it, uh, I think the rule of thumb for sales is 1% of the people that you do quotes for or, or pursue for a sale actually end up coming through. So I'm sure out of a little bit of frustration on the part of the freight forwarders, uh, they tend to get a little um, uh, not as reliable in their quotes, and that's usually what happens after one or two shipments and a handful of quotes that they would do for me. Anyhow, I've made uh, a company that I worked for previously, uh, there was a woman there who was helpful for a while and she too dropped the ball. And a new fellow, eager for business, uh, started pursuing me. And as a result, uh, his quote for Switzerland scored. So I want to make sure that all the paperwork and everything is done correctly. And I've, I've, I've made him aware of every aspect uh, along the road. Uh, I've given him all the documentation. Today is Thursday. Again, I'm taking that shipment to the crating company later this morning, and I expect it to be crated and shipped out uh, Tuesday uh, or Wednesday of next week, or at least picked up by the freight forwarder so that it can go out the door or be shipped uh, promptly and quickly because the customers requested air freight. Why someone has to have something so quick, I don't know, but that's not my place to question it. It's my place to um, make sure that that happens. Well, anyhow, at a quarter to five yesterday afternoon, I get an email uh, from the freight forwarder asking me for my federal tax ID number. Well, I have been in business since 1995. Uh, I have a DBA that's for aquarium design. I have a DBA for uh, myfishtank.com that I got in 2001. I have a DBA for Midwater Systems that I got in 2005. And I have a DBA for LA Fish Guys that I got in 2007, 2008. This entire time, my social security number has always worked for me. Well, for whatever reason, maybe it's because it's an international shipment, maybe because the, the TSA uh, or that um, Homeland Security issue is in much greater force, the freight forwarder won't accept a social security number any longer. So I had to go online and file uh, for a federal tax ID number, which really turned out to not be that difficult and fairly quick and painless. But doggone it, the reality is, I don't know what I'm doing when I file this tax stuff. And when I got to a certain point that asked about questions, asked about W-2 forms, I thought, who better to contact than my accountant? And so I made a telephone call. Well, she wasn't home and I got the answer machine. So alternative number two happens to be my tax lady, who I happened to meet with earlier that morning to do my last year's taxes. I call her, son of a gun get an answer machine. So I'm motivated to make sure that this shipment doesn't have any snafus and as a result I just move forward uh, in regards to filling out this federal tax ID information. Well, <laughs> turns out I may have made a couple of mistakes and I'm hoping that they'll easily be uh, resolved down the road. Uh, I got confused about the W-2 or the 1099 and for some reason assumed that I actually had two employees 
my accountant and my tax lady and so I stated that I had two employees uh, then asked me about some other tax forms that I needed to fill out and then I also registered uh, James B. Stein Jr. Uh, but under the name of Midwater Systems because that was the name that the shipment from Switzerland is going to be under and I didn't want to cause any more confusion. Well, it turns out that the employee thing and the name thing may end up causing me some frustrations uh, or certainly at the least some little bumps down the road in regards to uh, taxes and, and forms and all of that. So it's just another aspect of doing business that sometimes can be just a little sticky and a little tricky. So with a little bit of help at the tank manufacturers, we'll load up that 36-inch Jelly Aquarium into the van. We'll wrap it carefully with some utility blankets. We'll then drive on over to the crating company where we'll take it out of the van into his building so they can build the crate around it so we can ship this off to Switzerland. In part four, we discuss the assembly of an LED color-changing lighting system. This assembly consisted of LED ribbons or strips that are essentially a continuous electronic circuit. These circuits or ribbons can also be segmented at specific points. This would allow me the ability to create four individual strips. I just now need to figure out how to connect all four to the controller. So it's these connectors that connect to the ends of the LED ribbons I'm not real secure about. Uh, the one that I have hooked up does work. Um, so now what I need to do is collect the other three. I need to shorten all four and collect all three and then put them together inside here. So I think before I cut the wires, I kind of want to have an idea as to where they're going to go. Once again, these connectors kind of make me uncomfortable, so I think I'm going to probably end up putting a strip of electrician's tape across there just to help to keep the connectors in the right position, but they all kind of neatly come over here, curve, and then they'll all twine together and go into the um, terminal there, uh, the screw terminal. So I think I can cut right about here. So we'll go ahead and clip the ends of those wires to shorten them down to an appropriate length. At that point, we then have to take and split the ends of the four connecting wires, each wire having four individual strands with inside of it. This is where the tedious part comes into play. Okay, with all of them frayed or sprayed or splay, splayed at the ends, now I need to combine the four different colors. So I've arranged the wires so the black side is the uh, bottom wire. And at least it uh, helps me orientate the colors towards each other. And using the cluster of black wires as a reference, I will now twist the remaining three colors respectively together. <clears throat> and then we have all four different colors twisted together as color groups. And that's what's going to fit into our uh, block terminal. This block terminal or screw terminal is a unit that you insert the wire into and then separately you tighten down a screw that clamps down upon the wire, thus making the connection. I see this as being just a little bit tedious, but apparently this looks like the only way to go with this type of a connector. So we've got to the point where all of our connectors now are screwed or attached to the uh, terminal block on the controller. We now need to take and uh, position these connectors on the ends of the ribbons. And that's the part that I'm a little not sure of. And what I'm not sure of is exactly how it connects to the ribbon. Obviously, it slips over the end, and I guess that's how it makes its connection. Okay, so if things are uh, as they're supposed to be, I'm going to plug in this transformer. Oh, 
Oh boy, I think we might be uh, better off than we think we are. So again, here's our remote control, and let's see what works. Well, certainly not in unison, is that? Hello, my name is Jim Stein. I'm with Midwater Systems, and I'm the developer of the Jelly Aquarium. The Jelly Aquarium is a tank designed specifically for the keeping of jellyfish. I offer five different sizes of tanks designed to be built into a wall or a freestanding cabinet. I also offer the inexpensive Mini Jelly Aquarium, which has its filter system built into its backside. Additionally, I offer tank-raised moon jellyfish, as well as a line of tanks designed for producing your own jellyfish. For more information on this fascinating world of keeping jellyfish, visit jellyquarium.com. You heard the phrase bio pellets, but really, what are bio pellets and what will they do? But basically, what the bio pellets are is they're a biodegradable polymer. The pellets, you put them in a reactor and they tumble in the reactor and the bacteria grow on the surface of the bio pellet and they consume the bio pellet and as part of their metabolic process, they also consume nitrate and phosphate right out of the water. After about two weeks, the bio pellets were activated and the nitrate started to drop. And uh, you can see when you open the, on the top, there's your little instruction sheet and that's what the pellets look like, oops, <laughs> when they're dry. Bio pellets and bio pellet reactors are available through Reef Dynamics. Call 707-733-3411 or reefdynamics.com for more information. Are you ready for the Marine Aquarium Expo this coming March 31st through April 1st of 2012? This is the largest aquarium consumer trade show in North America and a destination spot for marine hobbyists. Held at the newly remodeled OC Fair and Event Center and featuring over 100 exhibitors, speakers, demonstrations, and a huge product raffle. For more information, visit MarineAquariumExpo.com. So I played around with the ends, the wires, the connections, as well as the connectors themselves, and I think I've come up with two reasons for the current issues I'm having. Now I can see we're going to have some connection issues, but uh, also a little bit of realization as to how it's positioned, how the connectors position in relationship to the uh, ribbon also affects its performance or, or what it's thinking it's doing. And see, this one here is going to be a connection issue. And the more you fool around with these things, the more they uh, are going to wear out on you or break. Okay. Well, I've got all, i got three of the four working, and the fourth is a connection problem. But, um, off on let's see purple blue or aqua white all flash all green okay so uh, I just need to worry about this connection issue down here so not having much success trying to get that connector to stay connected on that particular ribbon I don't want to send it out that way. That's too hokey. That's too. That's just wrong. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is attempt to take that connector off the end. But as opposed to cutting it, I think what I'm going to do is try to use a soldering iron to try to loosen it so I can save what solders there, uh, and then I'll try to solder the ends of the wires onto the end of the ribbon. It's a little tricky because there's not a whole lot of solder there. There's not a whole lot of room. I don't see real well these days, so I have to wear my glasses, which aren't necessarily the strongest either. So I'm kind of getting into an area that um, uh, maybe I'm not qualified, but um, uh, I'll be honest with you, I've got the determination uh, and the, the uh, willpower to continue to move forward. So 
uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to find my uh, soldering iron and see if I can fix that myself. So having found my soldering iron, and I think I've had this since childhood, I'm going to attempt to warm up the solder so that I can remove the connector from the end of the four strand wire. I'll then take and warm up the solder at the ends of the four strand wire and try to connect them directly to the LED ribbon strip. I think I did it. Let's see. Ah. Uh, so the problem can't be with, well, it is with the connection. As it turns out, it in fact is a connection issue. It's just not with the connector at the end of the ribbon. Hmm. Well, I think I've got it down to um, one connector, the blue wire. I'm going to try to re-solder it and see if I can solve that connection issue. Thinking it's the blue wire and how it connects to the LED ribbon being the source of the problem, I'll attempt to re-solder that connection. Now, if it was as simple as a connection issue, it should work. Still doesn't. So there's something here in this third string that's an issue, or this fourth string, and I don't know what it is. So with some determined poking and wiggling and the preparation of a big hammer, I finally figured it out. Well, I think I've got it narrowed down to, I must have damaged the little uh, ribbon. Uh, because, as I said earlier, it's a little electronic circuit uh, and a continuous strip. And I must have um, broke one of the connections in there because if I tweak the end of this just right, of course I won't do it now. There you go. See if I tweak it just right. I can get that circuit to close. So I think what I'm going to have to do is take out the first three links and try to bypass that first section. See, it's right there. Okay, so we went ahead and actually replaced that entire strip. There was an obvious short in probably one of the little three LED segments and so I probably could have broke that out there, but it would have looked like I had broke it out of there. So I went ahead and replaced it. I've just got done soldering in uh, the connections to the end of that new strip. We're now ready to um, plug it in and test it and see if it works. And it appears as though it does. I've got uh, four strings all working. None of them seem to have any uh, uh, shorting issues. They're all the same color. They're all doing what they're supposed to do. So I think I've been successful in honoring my commitment to the doctor. And I'll get this um, kind of tidied up a little bit, maybe put a little cable tie in here. Uh, I think I'm going to get one of those little plugs that fits through the end of the uh, light to secure it, as opposed to trying to drill that out because I don't have a drill bit big enough. It looks like it's bigger than half inch. I'll get the lens put back in here and get it packaged up and we'll um, get it shipped out to that doctor in Louisiana. And so we managed to get that color changing LED lighting system boxed up and shipped off to the uh, doctor in Louisiana. Uh, even though they didn't come through with a uh, in-wall aquarium system sale, at the very least they did come through financing our education with the color changing LED lights. Um, so it kind of puts me a step ahead of the game um, and hope maybe someday uh, that person may come back and decide they still uh, want a jelly aquarium sale. Um, we did follow up with the fellows in uh, Chicago, Illinois on their 30-inch cabinet system. Uh, they received it fine. Everything went together well. I think they were getting ready to either fill it up with water or just about ready to order some jellyfish. Um, we got the uh, 
uh, Jelly Aquarium in Wall system uh, down to the crating company. Uh, I understand that it was picked up by the uh, freight forwarder, so it's currently en route to Switzerland. I expect to hear from those fellows shortly as well. Probably the one person who um, uh, we haven't heard from uh, is our friend Bucky, and at this point I'm assuming that I probably won't, and that was a, a lesson learned as well. Um, and as long as you don't continue to make the same mistake, um, it was worthy of the expense, or in this case loss, of a sale uh, to learn what not to do next time. Um, so in condensing what started out as three short little stories, uh, the final thing that we really haven't discussed much was um, uh, the sea nettles and setting up that system for another existing service customer to um, uh, pay me to educate myself there. And I spoke with the uh, collector uh, on the East Coast, and right now the uh, tail end of winter, beginning of spring, is not the time uh, that sea nettles would be out. Uh, that's more late spring, early summer, uh, so that person will uh, make contact with us at that time, uh, and then we'll bring in a few of them, set up one of the jelly aquarium systems here, and um, see if not only we can learn something, but if we can avoid getting stung. So with that in mind, always keep moving forward, and we'll see you soon.